cozy in here. I didn't know if I was on. My brothers, welcome, welcome, welcome. You know who it is? I'm D. It's the Future Fathers FF podcast. Yes, yes. In the building again. We're in the space where we, we take up space and we just do things. My brothers, how you doing? I hope you're all right. I hope your week's been okay. Hope your day's been okay. Hope you ain't beat nobody today. Yeah? The thing should be good. Bros, I'm all right. Just pouring myself some water. Yeah. Making sure I stay hydrated. And I want to get into something with you today, guys. Because we're all dads. Yeah? And we all like to see our children doing well. We don't want to see our children in... in any bad situations or anything like that. Sorry about that. Oh, that was nice. Oh, yeah, that one had a tang to it. Anyway, none of us want to see our children in compromising positions. But you guys know I work in a hotel. So, I get to see human beings be human beings on, on, on a fundamental level, just, just being themselves, yeah? That being said, we are absolutely disgusting. And I say that with the utmost respect for the rest of the human race, yeah? But some of you need to fix up seriously reason why I'm saying this is because, my brothers, I want to draw to your attention, putting your children in compromising positions. Now, I don't mean necessarily like putting them outside, yeah, or putting them in a car that's got nobody in it and sending it on its way. No, no, no. Well, yeah, those kind of situations, but not deadly, not deadly situations, compromising situations. So, as I always do, I'm coming to you with an experience, Yeah. Um, I saw a gentleman today get out of his car, parked up. Should I say, let me give you the story properly. Do, do, do. I, I wish I had some sounds I could make. Let's, let's see what we got. No. 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 Okay, okay, let's start the story. Um, no, no. All right, all right, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, the story goes like this. <laughs> There was a gentleman that parked up his car outside of work today. Parked up outside the hotel in a parking space, yeah, paying display bay. Parked up, and he was there for about, I don't know, he's probably there about an hour, actually. Yeah, because I had to take out the rubbish, and he was there, see him park up, and then I came back out a little while after. Anyway, he come, I, I see him about an hour after, about an hour after he parked up his car. And he's just sitting in the car and I see him keep turning around. Keep turning around, turning. I'm thinking, what is he doing in the car? Anyway, he opens the car door. Gets out. Opens the back door. Takes his daughter out. I was like, oh, you're just talking to the child. Leaves the door open. The car door open, the front door. And proceeds to pick his daughter up and let her pee on the pavement right beside the car i'm thinking wait hold on brother don't you see me you you don't see me yes you're there and your child is safe because i ain't gonna do nothing but i turned around i went straight back inside i'm thinking to myself that did not just happen this man did not just do that with his small child is he stupid and then I thought to myself, wait, hold on. I've not only seen him do that, I've seen plenty of people do that. Plenty of people. And I got to wondering, I said, wait, hold on, but would you really put your child in a situation like that? Man don't know me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know who's around, who's in the vicinity, who's, who can see him, who can see his child. He doesn't know anything. I don't know if he knows this. I'm just, I'm, I'm going off of 
what I know about the area that we were in. I haven't seen him before, haven't seen him since. So I'm going to assume, yeah, I don't like to make assumptions, but I'm going to assume that he's not from the area. When I see that now, I'm thinking, dude, you really didn't do that. Like, you don't know who's there. You don't know who's watching. Why would you do that to your child? And then I got to thinking, how many other situations like that happen across the world? Not just in England, yeah, because that's where I am. Across the world. Because I'm not just trying to think about where I am. I'm trying to think about the children everywhere. And I know these things happen. I know they, I know they go on regularly. But are we, are we that stupid that we think it's okay to do things like that? And it should be. It, no, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be okay to do things like that. You shouldn't. You shouldn't want to. You shouldn't feel like it's okay to partially undress your child in public. And have them just pee on the sidewalk. Whether it's a boy or a girl. Don't business. You shouldn't be teaching your child those things. Not only that. Excuse me. You've put your child in a compromising position. Now let's just say. Let's just say. For argument's sake. There was somebody. Watching him and his daughter. And. They decided. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm not even going to finish my sentence because it makes me feel sick just thinking about it. But I have to think about it. My brothers, I've said this to you before. If I can think about something, there's somebody else thinking the opposite. So I'm thinking to myself, right, I, I wouldn't do that. But there's people that do that. And with that comes people that would protect the child. And there comes people that would not protect the child. There are people that would intend to do harm to that child. I'm struggling to think of why any father would do that. I know you can see the frustration on my face if you're watching. My brothers, if you're listening, the reason why I'm quiet is because even though I've seen it and it's it's an event that has happened and it's gone, it's in the past now. Or it's in my past and that man's past and his daughter's past. He, I don't know if he's going to do that again. I don't know. Like I don't know him. I would hope he wouldn't do something like that again. Regardless of whether it's a crowded area or not. As I said, it's it's outside a hotel. Not the front of the hotel, so it's not on the main road. It's, it's back of the hotel. But regardless, there is um, student housing across the road. Literally across the road. My brothers, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could, I understand your child needs to use the toilet. I understand that there wasn't too many, there wasn't anywhere in the vicinity for him to take his child. And I understand people let their children pee on, on the sidewalk, on the pavement, in the park, in the bushes, by trees, in the corners, all kinds of stuff. I understand that these things happen, yeah? I'm not going to say that I've never done that, but I've always been in a position, if my children have needed to pee, I've always made sure that it was a safe position where nobody could see them. Yeah? And I always stood with my back to them, watching the, the, the outside vicinity. And remember, I've got two boys, so that's a completely different scenario. Well, it's not a completely different scenario, actually still a child so you know i just i just find it hard to wrap my head around it that people would put their children in compromising situations like that where they could be vulnerable well they are they it's a vulnerable position to be in anyway you're half naked regardless of whether dad's there and it's it's you know you feel like you're doing the safe thing I saw what he did. I could see the position he was in. Let's just, all right, my brothers, let's take the scenario like this. Yeah? I'm going to explain to you the position. So he's opened the car door. He's, he's 
He opened the driver's side door, walked around the car, yeah? Opened the passenger, the front passenger door, and then opened the back passenger door. No, opened the front passenger door, got the child out, and literally put the child out. Now, he's facing frontwards, yeah? So he's facing the same way the car's, the same direction the car is pointing in, and the door's open. He can see me through the window, can he not? And he just stands there and just undoes the child's trousers, pulls her trousers down, picks her up. And I'm like, my goodness. Why? Why would you do such a thing? Given the world we live in and the state of things and how people are, certain people, as I said, that would, the kind of people that would wish to do a child harm, my guy. If you ever hear this, and you ever, or you ever see this podcast, my brother, I hope you don't do anything like that ever again with your child. Do that with yourself. If you need to go to the toilet, you can stand up in a corner and pee. That's good for you. Don't do that with your youth. Please, I beg you. Not your daughter. No way. Mm-mm. And don't do it with your sons either, brothers. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. You know, people look at us funny enough as it is for the slightest thing, let alone urinating out on the side, or out on the street. That's not that, what? Come on. Like, I'm a big man, and I'd still prefer to use a toilet than pee outside. I'm not that kind of guy. I, like, I, I just, not. I'm, as I said before, I'm not going to say that I haven't done it, because I have, yeah, but I can't. Nah, bro, I got to find somewhere secluded. Man's going to be, like, hidden away like some ninja. And then you got people out here just letting their children do whatever and doing whatever with their children. Right. So that was one thing. Later on in the evening. Now, I remember I work in a hotel, so there's a lot of people going down for food and whatnot around about 7 o'clock. Tell me why. There's four children. Four? Three or four children running around. You know, like playing, just playing. The children are playing. It's not it's not a thing. Like I can hear them. I'm taking out the rubbish. I turn around and little boy's taking off the little girl's dress and no one said anything. I, I, brother, brothers, my guys, let me tell you something. Yeah? I said something. I said something. I was like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mum turned around. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And they took the children away from each other and they went and got their food. Don't know what happened after. It's not really my concern. But I couldn't let that slide. It made me feel away. It actually did make me feel away because I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm trying to, I'm not even trying to do anything. I've said something because in my head and in my world, that's not happening. Children are not undressing each other in public. Regardless of whether they got something on underneath or not. No. That doesn't happen. I'm not allowing that to happen, whether it's my child or not. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Very calmly, very nicely, not frightening anybody's child. I'm not scaring anybody's child. I'm not shouting at anybody's child. It's not my place to do to do too much. But I'm a father. I'm a dad. I have children. I have nieces. My brothers. I'm looking at at you like this because I'm like, no, I couldn't let that slide. Being a dad, I couldn't just stand there and allow that. I couldn't. So I said something. Probably it may not have been the right thing to do. Some of you may say, oh, no, you, could, you shouldn't have said anything. You should have just left it alone. That's okay. That's all right. Some of you will say, oh, that was a good thing you did. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a dad. That's all it is. The one thing I look out for is 
children's well-being and their health and safety especially when they're small children and i'm not talking about children like 10 11 12 i'm talking like small small children like between the ages of five and eight as parents our sole responsibility is our children's safety and well-being that falls on us we are obligated to provide safety and well-being to our children my brother and i have stated it on a number of occasions they did not ask to be here so we better make stuff work and we better help them as best we can putting our children in compromising positions is not the way forward I'm, i'll tell you that much it didn't make me feel comfortable it doesn't make me feel comfortable and i don't think it, i will ever be comfortable with it because i'm not a parent that would allow something like that to happen with my own child so i'm a parent that wouldn't think it's okay for another child to be put in that situation by another parent now as i said i, I didn't say anything i just turned around and went straight back in the building that child that i saw was with their parent or their guardian whoever now i did think to myself what if i've done the wrong thing what if that wasn't that child's parent told you i thought i thought one thing if i can think one thing there has to be an opposite if i can think well that child's father is you know undressing them out on the street and letting them go pee it came to me later on in the day what if that wasn't that child's father I did something I I can't even bring myself to, to even think well do you know what Ooh. do you saw that happen and you didn't say nothing I've got to live with that but in this day and age in the society and the, the, the state that we live in well not state because I don't live in a state I live in a borough in England you can't say too much to people you really can't and even if you do i'd say seven times out of ten somebody's gonna have something to say against what you're saying even if it is for their benefit which i find nuts because we're always as parents we're always looking for the the right piece of advice or you know a nugget of information that would help us but the second anybody gives us some advice is generally unwanted you don't want somebody telling you about your child or how to deal with your child or how to raise them or help or whatever i'm i'm definitely a victim of that myself i've had people say something to me and i'm like, why are you talking to me don't tell me about my youth but in the same sense i've got to say oh do you know what maybe they was talking sense maybe i didn't see it or maybe i didn't understand what it was when they was telling me but do you know what later on I've I've tried. I've tried to, 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 to think about things a lot more than just in the moment. I've tried to sit back and after the moment try to look at myself and think, well, do you know what? Was there more you could have done? How could you have assessed the situation? And I'm talking about with my children as well, not just myself. Because we're talking about compromising situations for children. How many times have you thought to yourself, how many times have you seen a situation with an adult and a child and thought i'd never do that with my child you cannot judge somebody else by your own standards or should i say you cannot evaluate somebody else by your own standards because judgment ain't for us yeah judgment is not for us that's only for the most high i don't know i don't know like it is i don't know if you can see or tell or hear how much it's, it's kind of bugging me because, bros, I don't, as I said, that I wouldn't put my children or any children under my care in a compromising situation, whether it be health-wise, safety, any, I'm not willingly putting a child in a compromising situation. Some people, some people are better at assessing situations and dealing with certain situations. 
So, as I just said, I cannot evaluate somebody by my own standard. What I might do and what I might, what I may not do wouldn't be or it's not going to be exactly the same as somebody else because they may be able to deal with something a little bit better. They may be able to assess something a little bit better. They may be able to just see something and know, right, I'm not doing this, I'm doing this, this is how I'm going to deal with it, I'm going to. So there's, there's varying levels and degrees to how we will deal with our own children as opposed to dealing with other people's children. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you out there that work with children that can testify to that. I've got another episode coming up talking about something like that as well in the near future. But, bros, I think it's a bit... It was a bit of a tough one for me to see that and, and let it slide. I think that's what made me actually say something later in the day. In the day because I was just like, no, no, no. I can't let two things happen and I don't say something. And it's children, man. Like, come on. Like, you don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Yeah, you really don't have to be a rocket scientist to be like, oh, I'm not going to do something like that with my child. You really don't. It's, it's, I would, I would actually, I was actually going to say it's common sense. But as my grandmother would say, if common sense was common, everybody would have it. And everybody ain't got common sense. So I don't know why it's called common sense. Because there's people out there that willingly, every day, nonchalantly put their children in, in situations where things can happen. You know, circumstances, the circumstances surrounding you right now may change. So, you know, you can't be willing to do things that you may not perceive one way. Or, or, or should I say as a threat because there are a lot of threats out there that we don't see and most of all we don't understand as parents we need to be a lot more vigilant as parents we should and we need to have a lot more foresight the only way we get that is with experience you have to have children yeah, you have to. <laughs> it's like being a mechanic. You can't be a mechanic, yeah, if you don't work on cars. You can't be a painter if you don't paint wood. You can't be a chippy if you don't work with wood. You can't be a, a sparks if you don't work with electronics. Like, it don't work. You need the experience of being a parent to parent. I don't know about you guys, but I think putting our children in in situations that go against their health or their well-being is not a good thing definitely not a good thing but when situations arise that are out of your control they're teaching moments definitely teaching moments depending on your child's age and learning capacity obviously and the situation that you're in. Every situation is a learning opportunity, my brothers. Take everything as a lesson, not for granted. We're not supposed to put our children in compromising situations. We're supposed to be looking out for their health and well-being, their safety, and most of all, just keeping them all right, you know. We want them to grow healthily. We want them to grow safely. And we want them to grow into productive human beings. Generally, we want them to be better than us. That starts with being better than we are right now. I don't think there's too much more I can say on that one, my brothers. There we go. Please, bros, have to get it in. Like, share, subscribe. Do the flicky button. You know what that is post notifications so when the new video goes up you're all notified everyone will know and i'm going to drop in the, in the description the discord and also spotify for podcasters so you guys can listen if you'd rather listen rather than watching my brothers i'm been d this is the future fathers ff podcast i beg you stay blessed